Do you know what to do when the cue ball is frozen to an object ball? In this video, I show a large collection of shots and techniques that let you get out of and take advantage of this situation. Under the WPA Official Rules of Pool, you are allowed to hit into a frozen cue ball since it does not involve prolonged contact or a double hit or push. In super slow motion, you can clearly see that the hit is normal and legal with a shot like this. However, if there were even a tiny gap between the balls, this sort of shot would be a foul. You can tell by how the cue ball goes forward immediately after the hit. This can happen only if the tip hit the cue ball a second time after the cue ball hit the object ball. With a larger gap, you can better visualize the action of a shot like this. Especially in super slow motion. Notice how the cue ball stops and then goes forward after the second hit. You are not allowed to hit the cue ball twice, so this is a foul. But again, if the balls are frozen, there is no double hit and the shot is good. When the frozen balls are lined up straight to a pocket like this, you need to be careful to not scratch. The cue ball goes forward even with a center ball hit. You can avoid the scratch just by hitting the cue ball at a slight angle. The object ball gets thrown a little, but not enough to miss the pocket. Obviously, if you use too much angle in either direction, throw will push the object ball well wide of the pocket. Another option to avoid the scratch is to use backspin to slow the cue ball. Now, if you need to hit the shot at an angle, for example to get shape on the next ball, you need to use gearing outside spin to prevent throw. For information on how to judge the required amount of spin, see the 40% rule at the link in the video description. If you don't use enough spin, you get cut and deuce throw. And if you use too much spin, you get spin and deuce throw. But if the amount of spin is the gearing amount, the object ball heads straight with no throw. I didn't have the amount of spin perfect and the ball threw a little, but my large pocket let the ball in. If you want to learn more about both cut induced throw and spin induced throw, see the throw tutorial link in the video description. Now let's look at cue ball control options with frozen ball shots. If the shot is lined up nearly straight and you need to follow down table, the only thing you need to do is hit the shot softly enough to hold for the next ball. But you can't hold a shot like this with slow speed. And you might even scratch. Here, backspin is required to slow the cue ball. Here, I need to throw the 11 to my right to pocket the ball. Because the 3 ball is in the way, I can't shoot the cue ball to my right to throw the ball and head up table off the end rail. Instead, I need to aim to my left with lots of left spin to throw the 11 to the right. I could go off one rail instead, but that requires an elevated cue with masse action since left spin is required to throw the 11. Here, I don't need any spin since the cue ball automatically goes forward and cut induced throw sends the 11 to the pocket. Here, I can't throw the ball enough without side spin while getting a look at the 8. But with a little right spin, I can easily get enough throw and shape. Here, I can get shape on the 8 with a slight angle and elevated draw. With the 11 aimed straight at the pocket, I use a little right spin to counteract the cut so there is no throw. The right spin also helped create a little favorable masse action. Here, I just need straight draw to pull back for the 8. Here, because the 11 is aimed at the left side of the pocket, I can just use straight draw at an angle to bend through the obstacles. That was more draw than I needed, but it was fun and it gave me the win. Let's look at some more throw examples. Again, when the line through the frozen balls is off, you can use cut induced throw to change the ball direction. 
Here, hitting toward the left side of the 8 throws the 8 to my left. I could instead use spin induced throw using right spin to throw the ball to my left. Here, the obstacle 5 blocks the cut induced throw option, so the spin induced option is a good choice. Here, the 5 blocks the spin induced throw option, so the cut induced throw option is a good choice. With pocket speed and a cut a little thinner than a half ball hit, you can really throw the 8 a lot here. Throw can also be used to pocket banks not lined up. Here, the cue ball and 8 are lined up far from the angle required to bank the 8 cross corner, but the 8 can be thrown to my left. And anytime there is throw, there is spin transfer. Here, the throwing force to my left imparts left or running spin on the 8, which lengthens the rebound to the pocket. Here, I am using cut induced throw. If you are worried about the bank double kiss, you can use spin induced throw instead. These shots require near maximum throw and spin transfer. The bank won't go if you use too much cut angle. Or not enough. It also won't go if you use too little spin. Or too much. For more information, see the maximum throw resource page linked in the video description. A carom shot is where you deflect the cue ball off a ball to pocket another. With a frozen cue ball, there is a very reliable system to aim this type of shot. It is called the twice as full or two times fuller system. You first visualize the line through the balls, and then the line in the desired target direction. Then you aim at the halfway point along the perpendicular to the target line. A center ball hit is required for the system to work properly. Here's another example showing how you need to be careful how you measure. Here, the line through the balls is not perpendicular to the rail as it was in the previous example. If you incorrectly bisect the distance on the rail, the line of aim is way off. Instead, you always need to measure along a line perpendicular to the line through the balls. You can use your cue to help with this, either by using the joint of the cue to visualize the line through the balls with the cue pointing at the target, or by using the joint of the cue to visualize the line pointing to the target with the cue pointing along the line through the balls. Either way, the required line of aim goes through the halfway point along this line. Here, I am adjusting my aim up table a little so I hit the right side of the 13 or the rail first to eliminate the chance for a scratch and to leave the cue ball closer to the 9 to get the out. Here's an example where I'm using the system to play for shape on the 8 after pocketing the 13 in the side. And here's an example where I'm using the system to clear an opponent's ball blocking the pocket for the 8. Here is an interesting timed carom shot. I plan to shoot the 8 into the 11, with the cue ball hitting the 8 again after the 8 kisses off the 11. The action of the shot is tough to see at fast speed, but the shot also works at slower speed, where it is easier to see the kiss and carom. Notice how the cue ball and 8 don't separate at 90 degrees after the second hit, like you might expect, since both balls are moving when they hit. Here's a similar example, but with much simpler action, where the cue ball sends the 8 straight after the second hit. Here, the first ball clears a path and gets out of the way. Here's a final carom clearance shot example. The line through the cue ball and 8 heads to my left of the pocket center, so I can aim to the right to throw the 8 a little. I need to clear the 5 from the pocket to allow the 8 to go. I can achieve this with a follow masse shot. The combined spin causes the cue ball to race ahead of the 8 to clear the pocket in time. 
This is a variation of the famous trick shot called the passing lane shot. Now let's look at some interesting shots where the frozen cue ball or object ball is also frozen to a cushion. These situations don't come up often in game play, but they are fun to practice anyway. This first shot was made famous by the classic pool movie The Hustler. You just need to hit high on the cue ball with an open bridge and the cue easily rises up, allowing the cue ball and eight to clear. When the balls are reversed like this, you can kick into the rail instead to pocket the eight. This shot is from the movie The Color of Money. Notice how easily the cue gets out of the way with an open bridge. Also notice how the cushion compression helps create the necessary cut angle. Here's another famous frozen cue ball shot from the movie The Hustler. Here, playing 9 ball, a highly elevated masse shot is required to pocket the 1 and draw back for the 9 for the win. Here's another fun timed carom kick from the movie Pool Hall Junkies. And here's an example rail compression escape from the frozen ball for a two rail kick combo for the win. In slow motion, you can see how easy it is to extract the cue ball from the frozen ball and cushion. I hope you enjoyed and learned a few new tricks from this video. Isn't it amazing how many different ways there are to deal with various frozen cue ball situations? That's one thing that makes pools so great. There are so many possibilities and there are always new shots to learn. Again, if you want to learn more about any of the shots in this video, visit the video and resource page links in the video description. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.